So it's come to my attention that there are a few people a little confused about the rankings of the various Pokemon generations. Uh, so I thought I would I would do the honors of, of clearing the air, letting everybody know exactly which generations are the tippy top of S tier, which generations are the, the bit of me bottom. <laughs> So yes, we are ranking the Pokemon generations from 1 to 8. So before we get into it, let me kind of lay out how I'm going to be ranking these games. I'm going to be kind of looking at them not only as like the games from their respective generations, but also like what those generations brought to the games as far as mechanics, uh, the different Pokemon that the different generations brought and how great their designs are, how good the Pokemon are in general, and then of course how good the games in those respective generations were. So we're just gonna kick it off. So let's go ahead and slap right into it with them Gen 1 homies. Gen 1 gets a lot of attention from both sides of the spectrum. One side saying, ah, oh, ah, oh, Gen 1, oh my god, oh, you touch me so well, I love you. You can do no wrong. And the other side of course saying, ah, oh, that's, That's just rose-tinted glasses. Glass. Generation, generation 1, one worst, worst generation, generation actual garbage. garbage. And personally, I think Gen 1's pretty alright. Gen 1 was a super solid foundation for which this franchise was able to grow so heavily on. Starting out with just the designs of the Pokemon, some people say, oh, Gen 1 designs are garbage. What is this, just a, a glob of goo? What is this, a tree with legs? What is this? A rock? And while yes, a lot of Gen 1 designs are, are pretty simplistic, they're pretty bare bones, but I think that, that kind of helped this generation become so iconic. There are so many exceptionally solid designs this generation with a lot of their Pokemon that it makes sense why a lot of them are heralded as, heralded as pop culture icon nowadays. Say what you want about Gen 1, you can't deny that Pokemon like Pikachu, Charizard, Gengar, Eevee and its evolutions, Mewtwo and Mew, Snorlax, Alakazam, you know, all of these Pokemon with fairly simple designs are just now seen as super iconic. And I think that is because they are a little on the simple side, but also just really solid designs. Of course, the games themselves were a little janky to start out with, and the first generation of Pokemon didn't exactly have the, uh, the battle system laid out quite perfectly. Psychic types were super OP. The special stat contained both special attack and special defense, which was kind of broken. Some moves just didn't work, and some types just were useless. But that all being said, I do think Gen 1 deserves at least some of the credit that it gets as being a solid start to the Pokemon franchise. I would put it solidly in a, I would put it in A tier. I think the groundwork that the first generation laid out really helped Pokemon become such the bombastic franchise that it is now. Next we go on to Gen 2 and I gotta say F full bias here, Gen 2 is my favorite generation, so this this might have a little bit of bias, but I also think Gen 2 could be the best generation. Number one, the Pokemon designs are, are some of my favorites, and they're all, they're, so many of them are so fantastic. This generation brought some real bangers with it, and it's not even nostalgia talking, because I didn't get into Pokemon until Gen 3. So I don't know what it is about Gen 2, but it just hits me. And on top of great designs, they added so many new features to Pokemon. They added the Dark and Steel type to kind of counter how OP Psychic types were. And both of those are really fantastic types, two of my favorite types overall. Possibly two of the most competitively relevant types. They introduced breeding, they introduced shinies, they introduced held items, they introduced weather, friendship with your Pokemon. They split the special stat into special attack and special defense. They introduced the battle tower and they had a really really cool post game where you got to go back to the first generation region Kanto and go through all of their gems after you finished all the gems in Johto. So I think Gen 2 has a lot of spice in it. I think I would be willing to put Gen 2 in S tier. I understand if not everybody feels the same way, but I think it added so many great features to Pokemon to further build up that foundation that the first generation set up. 
I think the second generation strengthened that foundation so that more Pokemon generations can further build upon it. So next we go on to Gen 3, and Gen 3 is a, another fun one, another classic. Gen 3 had a lot of really great designs, especially the legendaries, the starters, and my chonky boy camera up, my moo cow flames, or he's a camel. He's kind of both. He's kind of a moo cow camel, and I love that about him. But Gen 3 also brought cool stuff like double battles, which are fantastic. That's a fantastic addition to the game. I think double battles are personally my favorite kind of battles, and Pokemon wouldn't quite be the same without them. They also brought along contests, which are very fun, always super fun. Super sad that they haven't been reintroduced into the series in a while. So Pokemon contests were a lot of fun. They need to come back. They also introduced uh, Pokemon abilities. Pokemon hadn't had abilities up until that point, so that's really cool. Abilities, another layer of complexity added to the game. And again, another really good post game with the, uh, what was it, Battle Maze on, I believe it's called. But yeah, just all around, Gen 3 is another really solid generation. I would say it's definitely better than Gen 1. Uh, from a lot of aspects. Pokemon designs, I uh, would kind of give it to Gen 1, but overall, I think Gen 3 is a little bit higher. I would put it in A tier above Generation 1. I don't think it's quite S tier. Some of the Pokemon designs are a little meh. Like, they did add a couple meh Meisters, you could call them. Volbeat and Illumise. Dang, Swalot. Just some of these kind of forgettable designs. Like, they're not really bad, but... You know, nobody ever thinks about them. They, they're never in the public conscious of like, oh man, I love those. I'm sure me saying Swalla isn't a great design isn't hurting anybody's feelings. Actually, I kind of do want to put Gen 3 in S tier. Despite some of the lackluster designs, I think it, I think it belongs there. Next, we go on to Gen 4, and Gen 4 was another personal favorite of mine. Probably my second fa favorite generation. But as much as I like Gen 4, I don't think it's one of the best generations. I don't think it added really a ton. It did definitely add a few things like uh, the physical special split where some types pre that were previously only physical attacks or special attacks now had attacks of both sides of the spectrum. Which is a huge, a huge benefit that a lot of Pokemon needed. And they also did add internet play uh, for the first time, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. No small step. There are a decent amount of really good designs. I especially like the uh, designs that they added to previous Pokemon to kind of give like little single stage boys competitive viability by giving them beefier evolutions. But I don't think it was the best generation ever. I'll say it's better than Gen 1. It's a really fun generation. I think it's solid. I don't think there's a problem with it being an A tier up there with Gen 1. I think that's fair. Next we go on to Generation 5. A hotly debated one. I haven't fully played through this game quite yet. I'm streaming it now, uh, Nuzlocke, and I'm like, to the last gem? So I haven't fully completed the game, but I gotta say, I can see why so many people love this game and herald it as the best generation. It makes sense. This game is really cool. This generation is really cool. I love that it's such a self-contained generation. Like, there are so many new Pokemon that they added, more than any other generation, and they made it uh, to where basically the whole game, you're just using new Pokemon. I like that. I like that a lot. It's something I wish newer games would kind of maybe experiment with a little bit because I like having to use the new Pokemon. It's cool to see, you know, oh, wow, a Pidgey on Route 1. Wow, how nostalgic. But, you know, after a while, whenever games got Pidgey on the Route 1, it, it gets old. So I really like that about it. And it added a lot of quality of life upgrades, like being able to use TMs repeatedly without having to worry about, oh, if I use this TM, it's going away forever. They also added stuff like uh, hidden abilities, which is very cool. They tried stuff with the uh, rotation and triple battles, which is fun. I think those are fun. And a lot of the new Pokemon, while at first I didn't think Gen 5 had great designs, they've, they've grown on me a lot. I used to hate the dang ice cream vanilla line, but they've, they've grown on me. I think they cutie pies now. I love them. They're some of my favorite ice types now. I thought it was dumb 
to have these inanimate objects be Pokemon, like oh, a, a trash bag, really? An ice cream cone, really? But I think that Gen 5 is a, is a solid generation that kind of stands on its own, and the story of the game is great, the gameplay's a lot of fun, and I just really like Gen 5, and I can see why so many people do. So I would say Gen 5 is uh, also S tier. I would put it right next to Gen 2. I would probably say they're about equal in fantasticness. Gen 2 f barely ekes out personally because it's my personal favorite. But honestly, my honest opinion is that they are both... They, were, they are equals. I wish I could put them like side by side in the S tier instead of one behind the other because they deserve it. They're both they're both top quality generations. All right, and then we go on to Gen 6. And Gen 6 is an interesting one. Generation 6 introduced a lot of really really cool things, namely mega evolutions and the fairy typing, which don't get me wrong, are fantastic additions. I love both of those things immensely. However, the rest of the generation, at least to me, is kind of lackluster. Super few new designs, there weren't very many at all compared to the rest of the generations, and a couple of the designs were a little, little lacking, a, a little forgettable, I won't say bad, but just kind of, just kind of meh, which really hurts when there are so few Pokemon. And overall, the game itself, the story, isn't super hype it doesn't pop off it, it don't slay so while there are things working for it like the mega evolutions the fairy typing there are also a lot of things kind of working against it so i would say it lands solid solidly in b tier i don't feel comfortable putting it lower or higher because like i said the additions it did add were really great. It has, it's probably the generation with the highest highs and the lowest lows. Although Mega Evolutions, I will admit, as much as I love them, they are a bit overpowered. But I do love them. I think they are really fun. They let old Pokemon kind of have a new breath of life and just, it's fun. It's, it's fun. I like it. Then we go on to Generation 7. Dang old, reliable Alola. <laughs> Alola is another kind of Another tricky one. As much as I want to like Alola, because I really do like the setting with it being kind of based on Hawaii, and I appreciate that they kind of tried to change up the formula, and instead of having just gym challenges, they had these trials with the totem Pokemon, and the story was kind of cute with the, the islands kind of making their brand new own Pokemon League. Other than that, uh, I mean, nothing from this generation really slaps me except the one thing that really really is fantastic that they added this generation are regional forms of older pokemon that was a fantastic addition i love the concept of regional forms of pokemon and i'm so glad they introduced something like that because it has brought with it so many super fun designs for old pokemon that just oh they're so great. So many great regional variants were birthed from the introduction in Gen 7, and I'm so hyped to see where else they take regional variants. But other than that, the Z moves are just kind of... kind of lame. And while some of the Pokemon designs are really cool, some of them don't really slap as hard as I want them to. Uh, other than, like, the uh, regional variants, of course, the starters are pretty pretty tight too. I feel like Gen 7 unfortunately is uh, possibly the weakest generation down there in C tier. I want to love it, but it just wasn't the most exciting generation. Not a ton of interesting stuff was added. So last but not least we go on to the most current game, the most current generation, Generation 8. We all know it. Some of us love it, some of us hate it. I will say that despite Pokemon Sword and Shield being another example of kind of lackluster story-wise, very lackluster post-game-wise, I do really like Gen 8 personally. I think they added a lot of really cool designs. They added some of the best regional variants I can think of. Dang, Galarian Weezing, dang, Surfetched, Galarian Ponyta and Rapidash, Perserker. Like, they added some pretty cool ones, and the new Pokemon they added 
are pretty hot too. They got a lot of pretty solid designs this generation. I would say design-wise, it definitely trumps the past two generations of Gen 6 and Gen 7. And they also added a new uh, battle gimmick of D-maxing, Dynamaxing, and Gigantamaxing, which are kind of, it's kind of really grown on me. I kind of love Gigantamaxing and Dynamaxing now. Possibly more than I like Mega Evolutions, because like I said, Mega Evolutions are a little OP. They can be pretty overpowered, but D-maxing is so much more versatile. You can make any Pokemon on your team Dynamax, and it's way more strategic because the moves, while being very powerful, also supply stat boosts and whatnot, and some Gigantamax Pokemon have special uh, attributes to their moves that no other Pokemon, no other Gigantamax Pokemon has. I think it adds a lot of new complexity to the battles. I think they're possibly one of my favorite battle gimmicks of the past few generations. As much as I love Mega Evolutions, I'm starting to lean more towards G-Maxing and D-Maxing as my favorites. And on top of that, Gen 8 also added a lot of quality of life upgrades, especially with being able to build uh, competitively viable teams way more easily now. Personally, I think it might even belong in, uh, in low A. Because uh, while the story might not be at all that great, I think it brings a lot to the table. I think there is a lot of good stuff in Gen 8, and I think the bad stuff kind of overshadows it, especially with the lack of polish in the game's look and everything, the lack of vibrant animations in the Pokemon. But I think the base game in and of itself, and the mechanics they added to the Pokemon franchise, I think those are enough to make this game pretty solid in my book. Do I think it is disappointing overall as a modern game? Very much so, yes. They can do so much more. Pokemon is the most profitable franchise, I think, on the planet. For them to be so profitable, they ought to be doing more to make these games all that they can be. And it sucks that they are just kind of the bare bones basics. But I do enjoy what is presented in the game, even if it is a little lackluster. I really like the wild area. I really like the uh, raid battles, raid dens, the Dynamax adventures introduced in the DLC. And I just think it brought enough to the table to make me say, hey, it's not great. It's not a great game as a modern game, but as a Pokemon game, when compared to the other generations, as a generation, all of the mechanics and things that it introduced, I would say it is very solid. And if this game were a highly polished, like highly worked on, all fluid animations, great design as far as a like game, uh, game look wise, I think this game would be heralded as one of the better Pokemon games for sure. And it sucks that it has to be limited so much by the kind of lackluster uh, game design behind it. I wouldn't say I hate any of these generations at all, even Generation 7, like I said. I do respect it a lot for trying to be a little bit different from the other generations, kind of breaking off, trying a new thing with the Totem Pokemon and the Trials and how the islands are based on Hawaii. I think it's really cool. I think the ideas behind the generation are great. I just don't think they are fully realized to their maximum potential and the other things introduced in the generation weren't all that impressive. And the game wasn't all that exciting. The story wasn't all that exciting. But all that aside, I do really like all of these generations, especially Gen 2 and Gen 5. But what do you think? Dang. I've been rambling on long enough. What are your thoughts on these games? Do you think that uh, that Gen 8 is the best game ever? Maybe you think Gen 4 is the best game. Whatever you think, let me know if you want to in the comments. You don't have to. Thanks for hanging out with me for a minute or two, and I'll see you around, everybody. Take care.